Okay, next we will discuss mass action law. And this law tells us that under thermal equilibrium, for any semiconductor the product of number of electrons electrons and number of holes is constant and this number and it is independent of the amount of of donor and acceptor impurity doping or impurity concentration and this is known as Mars action law as we know that number of electrons in the conduction band is represented by n and number of holes in the valence band is represented by p according to this law mass action law the product of number of electrons and the number of holes is a constant which is equal to n i square and this constant and it is independent of the amount of like how many donor or acceptor impurities we are adding to the semiconductor. Now we derive this relation for intrinsic semiconductor. Like for intrinsic semiconductor we derive the relation that n is equal to p which is equal to n i. But mass action law is true for every kind of semiconductor. Now here we will see why this is true. As we know that the electron and hole concentration in intrinsic semiconductor is like the number of electron in the conduction band will be equal to the number of hole in the valence band which is equal to Ni. Where Ni is the intrinsic, where Ni is the intrinsic carrier concentration now since n is equal to ni and p is equal to ni so if we take the product ni n into p which is equal to ni into ni which is equal to ni square now this is true for intrinsic semiconductor semiconductor now extrinsic semiconductor is of two types one is p type and the other is n type in p type the number of holes are far far greater than the number of electrons and the, the number of holes in the valence band are far greater than the number of electrons in the conduction band while in n types semiconductor the number of electrons in the conduction band are far greater than the number of holes in the valence band now how we prove that condition one is true for like this condition how we prove that equation one 
is also true for extrinsic semiconductor now we did a calculation for the electron concentration in the conduction band and hole concentration in the valence band for intrinsic semiconductor like for intrinsic semiconductor we do a calculation like the electron concentration and conduction band is V and we calculate this relation n is equal to n c e raised to a power e f minus e c over k t and whole concentration and valence band and intrinsic semiconductor is p which is nv e raised to a power ev minus ef or kt now in the derivation of these two relations like in the derivation of this relation as well as in this relation we never mention any specific semiconductor we never consider we never i uh, mention like whether it's a intrinsic or extrinsic, whether it's P or N, but we consider a general case. The only assumption we made was the Boltzmann condition. Only assumptions we made during the derivation of above two relation during the derivation of above two relation was Boltzmann condition in which we assume that the Fermi level lies between EC and EV like we consider the conduction band and here we have the valence band and we assume that the Fermi energy is lie between EC and EV. EV, here we have EC. And we assume that the Fermi energy lies between EC and EV. Like the position of Fermi energy EF is choose to be ordinary. It could be in the middle, or it could be close to the conduction band, or it could be close to the valence band. Now using such condition we use two conditions that EC minus EF these are the Boltzmann condition okay are much greater than KT or EF minus EV are much greater than KT. These were the two conditions which we use in the derivation of these two relations while we assume that the Fermi energy is somewhere in the in between EC and EV. Now the product of these two equations, NP, the product of this equation with this is NP which is NC NV into E raised to a power minus EC minus EV over KT. If we take the product then we have this relation because EF will cancel with this EF. So we have only this EC and EV left. Now if we look at this equation then there is no involvement of Fermi energy because this equation this product is independent of EF and we know that EF is different for P types and N types semiconductor which we will discuss later. Since this equation is independent of EF while other quantities are same for N and P type semiconductor therefore the product does not depend on the type of semiconductor we are looking for like this product NP is independent of the type 
of semiconductor we are looking for. If this is independent of the semiconductor then the product NP now here if we look at this EC minus EV EC minus EV is basically EC minus VV is basically the energy gap between conduction and valence band this is called energy gap EG which is equal to EC minus EV so this equation now can be written as NC NV E raised to power minus EG over KT now this product NP only depends on the energy gap EG therefore we can say that the relation NP is equal to NI square is valid for both intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor and this is mass action now this product just depends on the energy gap eg and we already mentioned in the extrinsic semiconductor like in n type or p type semiconductor that this energy gap does not change if we add the impurity the only change we observe was this ea minus ev which is the acceptor energy level the difference between acceptor energy level and in valence energy level or the only difference was the difference between conduction energy level and the donor energy level these two things changes if we add the impurity while the energy gap eg remain constant even in the addition of impurity if EG is constant in both N and P type while in intrinsic semiconductor the EG is also constant so it means that this product will remain constant for every kind of semiconductor so this relation is valid for both intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductor and this is called mass action law which tells us that the product of number of holes and the number of electrons is a constant which is independent of the type of semiconductor or the type of impurity we are adding to the semiconductor Thank you.